Gammy. Yeah, yeah. I apologize for keeping you guys waiting so long. I hate doing that. Uh, dealing with some stuff back here, but uh, we, we had uh, it was a sellout 10, 313, $3.9 million gate. Um, knockout of the night went to Bart. Congratulations. Submission of the night, Donald Cerrone. And fight of the night, BJ Penn versus Nick Diaz. All those guys won $75,000. Becoming habit for Cerrone. Congratulations, man. I love it. I do too. <clears throat> Nick Diaz should be out here in a few minutes. Uh, BJ Penn had to go to the hospital. Who's first? Kev? Dana, um, if you could comment, first of all, uh, on the star that's arising in Nick Diaz and sort of like, you know, just, you know, all of a sudden he's like crazy over the top popular and just wonder if you can comment on that, first of all. Yeah, um, he did. He blew up out of nowhere and, and uh, part of it is his attitude and, uh, you know, I think people love real fighters and, and that kid is definitely a real fighter. <clears throat> in the 10 years that we've all seen BJ Penn perform and fight. You've never seen BJ Penn busted up. I mean, even his fights with, uh, you know, where he was on the bottom getting smashed by Hughes, getting smashed by St. Pierre. He doesn't cut, he doesn't bleed, he doesn't swell up, he doesn't, you know, it's like he's got leather skin. He got busted up tonight, let me tell you. Uh, Nick Diaz is the real deal. He came out tonight and proved. Uh, and to give BJ credit where credit's due, what a warrior to stand in front of him for three rounds, right in the pocket. You know, I, I honestly didn't know if BJ was going to answer the bell for the second, uh, third round. I honestly didn't think he was going to, and he did. And as exhausted as he was, there were moments where he was firing back and, you know, got to respect it, got to respect it. Just in talking about uh, Nick, you know, you have, especially with some of the champions, low-key personalities, you know, George and, and guys and they're low-key and they're not, and Nick is a kind of a, you know, brings a different element to it. You everything. think? <laughs> and, uh, I, I do think. And do you think that that's good because does the sport need a little bit of that sizzle? You know, you kind of got the, the other part, but do you think right now that you need that kind of personality? I, I don't know whether it's good or bad or what it is. What I love is, uh, you know, like I always say, it's real. This is real. And, and I've said about Nick Diaz, I don't, want not, I don't want Nick to not be Nick, but I wanted him to play the game a little bit, you know? We had a little bumpy start. We'll see how this, how this ride goes from here on out. But uh, I, I got some stuff to tell you guys when, when Nick gets out here. We're waiting for him to uh, – tonight has been crazy, man. Um, but I'm not going to say it until Nick gets here. And I have one more question for you and then a question for Roy. Um, can you comment on uh, Crow Cop retirement and also uh, BJ? And I don't know if he was serious or not, but he said that you know, he was going to retire and what they both have meant to uh, the sport of mixed martial arts and to the UFC. Yeah, you know, Crow Cop's been a, a, a good guy since the day we signed him. Um, again, a, a guy who's a warrior, a legend, has done tons of great things in the sport and uh, – you know, I know he's very disappointed with his, his run in the UFC, but I, I said it to you guys at the press conference before. I'm 42. At 38, to still be, you know, out there fighting with, with, with guys that are a lot younger, faster, explosive than you, it's, you know, and he came out and he did what he said he was going to do. At the press conference, he said, I'm going to give you guys a fight. Whether I win or I lose, you know, it won't be a, a boring fight like the Frank Mir fight was, and it was not. And then uh, BJ, you know, uh, you know, that's never happened to BJ before, what happened to him tonight. He said he wants to retire. We'll see how that plays out. I don't know. I, I didn't hear it, but uh, we'll see how that, that whole thing plays out. And then, Roy, if I could ask you, you know, you had talked before the fight about facing the legend and everything. Now knowing that, you know, you're kind of the guy in the record books that, uh, that put him into retirement, is it a – I know you wanted the win. It was an important win for your career. Is it a melancholy feeling just knowing that, you know, the guy that so many people look up to in the sport is now uh, retired? No, it just uh, – in there, like, he, he came to, you know, bang, and he came to throw, and, like, if, if he didn't want to retire, he could still fight. He's still one of those guys that hits hard. He's still, he's very competitive. It's just one of those, like, for me, it just, I just wanted to make sure I was, you know, the guy that goes out there and just wins. And especially, it feels good to be back in the W. Dana, uh, did, oh, sorry. Go ahead, whoever said Dana. 
Oh, Dana, did, did you have a chance to talk to either Krokop or uh, BJ afterwards? Krokop left earlier. He just wanted to get out of here. He didn't want to stick around. He was upset. And then uh, they, they took BJ right to the hospital. Uh, and if I could talk to Chuck, please. Uh, Chuck, obviously kind of an, an interesting fight tonight. Uh, probably didn't play out uh, the way most people thought it would. Can you explain uh, kind of what was going on through the course of the fight and then, you know, kind of the lack of activity from both of you? Yeah, so uh, I was expecting uh, to exchange more than, than I did uh, tonight. So uh, I wanted to see uh, what he could do, I guess, you know, uh, just facing me. And uh, at, the last, so at the last round, I just decided to, uh, to go forward. So um, I, I don't know. So I, most of the time when I, when I, when I fight, the, I can say everything is exciting, but I was kind of slow, you know. So I, I, I caught the, the, cough, the cold, and uh, those things make me very different. But uh, and also just the the pressure, kind of pressure, you know, that people say, yeah, uh, you good, you, you did a great job, you know, before and now that's the time, that's the time to come back and uh, get the opportunity to uh, to fight for the belt, you know, just uh, try to be the next contender. So I just try to save um, my position, don't push me too much, but uh, just uh, end of the fight, and th that's what I did. Thank you. If I could talk to Donald real quick, obviously walking into this fight, you know, you, you said that Dennis was kind of a one-dimensional striker and you weren't really overly concerned. Uh, how did things play out versus your expectations? I know you're typically critical of yourself even when you have uh, great performances. Uh, yeah, I was looking, you know, he dropped his hand a lot. I was kind of looking to high kick and I didn't turn it over. I missed my shot to, to for the, the KO, but that's okay. You know, I got to just work on things I need to work on. But uh, no, I wasn't impressed with the strike. You know, I want to show the world what real kickboxing looks like. So I was Glad to go out there and, you know, be kind of technical. $75,000 bonus, but also yeah, lifetime yeah. passes to bull riding. Uh, which which one means more to you tonight? Uh, <laughs> how, how do you compare those? Yeah, man, I'm going to watch the finals tomorrow. I'm super excited about it, man. A lot of those guys are my friends, and go in there and just shit, watch them shit and get. It's going to be a good time, man. Hey, the 75K makes my toy getting experience a lot more fun, so. And I know that you, lastly, I know you say that, you know, you're not really worried about what happens. You do want to fight again before the end of the year. But uh, people are starting to put your, your name in the title contention. Uh, you know, you want to fight again for the end of the year. But if your name was in that mix, would you want to sit on the sidelines and wait for that shot? Or is it just no, about fighting? Fight. Yeah, I want to fight. I want to just keep fighting. I don't want to sit and wait. Uh, question for Roy, please. Roy, congratulations. Uh, it seemed like at, at the beginning of the second round, you guys both kind of rocked each other. I was wondering uh, when, when Mirko hurt you, how badly were you hurt there, if at all? Uh, when when I hit Mirko, and uh, I was like, okay, this is my time. I was gonna go out there and uh, try to capitalize on it because I I kind of hit him a couple times in the first round. Second second round, I hit him, and I just really wanted to like kind of just make him pay. Uh, and then I walked right into a left hand, and then they just put me on the defense real quick. And then uh, he kept on coming, and until I got you know I got my head straight, and then I came back, and then and then I got you know takedown, and then the crucifix and whatnot. So uh, it seemed like the, the first round was really close, but all three judges actually gave it to Mirko. Uh, d does that surprise you, or, or did you feel he was you know kind of may maybe getting the better of you in the first five minutes? Oh, the, you know what? I couldn't even the first round. I thought I had in the bag, so I, I wouldn't even. I can't even. Believe, I, I'd have to see what the judges saw. Uh, and then, just lastly, hate to have to have a, a question about your appearance, but did the beard have to go uh, r right after the victory? Um, no, not r not really. It just it was just one of those things. Uh, I knew you guys press people. It's gonna be on a slow Monday, so give you guys something to talk about. <coughs> Another one for Roy over here. Why were you so reluctant all week to to show off your physique at the at the weigh-ins and whatnot? Obviously, you did a lot of work and and you looked a lot better than you have as of late. So I'm wondering why you wanted to keep that a secret. Uh, not really to try to keep it a secret. Um, I think the biggest thing that I wanted to do is um, the porn industry is kind of going down, and if you want to see a half make naked man, you're gonna pay for it. So apparently, everybody paid for it. What did you do to lose that weight? Secret ninja training. You're still not going to give us a serious answer on it, right? No. <laughs> Did you cut your hair also, or only the beard? I can't really tell what's going on in the back. That, that's my Steven Seagal ponytail.
Over here uh, for Bart, congratulations on your first uh, UFC win. Uh, how did it feel uh, to get your first win uh, in the octagon? And do you feel uh, Griffin wasn't giving you very much uh, respect going into this fight? No, I think he uh, he kind of almost disrespected me. You know, I think he uh, he got lazy. He didn't take the camp seriously. I think that's why he didn't make the way in the first place. But um, I doesn't really matter to me. You know what I mean? I I, I just want to get out of there fight. You disrespect me, disrespect me, whatever. I just want to get out of there fight and uh, put on a good fight. Uh, and uh, for Donald, uh, really quick, congrats on your win. Um, recently, you talked about going down to featherweight to fight. Nam Phan, is that still on your radar, and do you still want to fight at featherweight against Nam Phan? Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I'd like to go down 145 and fight also. You know, I, I, I'm not leaving 55 by any means. I just like to go down. Whatever keeps me fighting, pretty much. So, yeah, chasing, chasing them down. Uh, yeah, a question for uh, Hatsuhiyoki. Uh, I was wondering, uh, you had a close fight. Uh, were you uh, worried at all that the judges would see it your way? Uh, it was a uh, yeah, tough fight, so I can say, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, <coughs> I got to the second round and uh, met the uh, third round is that I'm, I'm not sure, so yeah, it was very close fight. Uh, it's possible to his his win. Yeah. Uh, in that third round, uh, when he took you down, um, it, it looked like you were trying to go for some of those uh, subs that you liked. Uh, but he was uh, fending it off pretty well. How how worried were you that uh, you needed to finish? Yeah, I think uh, I needed to finish the fight. Uh, yes. Uh. Okay. Thanks. Another question for Czech Congo, Czech. Um, uh, after a fine performance tonight, um, in which you you kind of out-strategized Matt Mitrion, um, do, do do you feel you mentioned another title shot? Oh, sorry, a title shot, um, uh, and and the fact that you fought Cain Velasquez on three weeks' notice at UFC 99, and you had him down a few times, you took him the distance. Obviously, you lost the fight. Does that kind of stay with you, and you feel that you definitely want a rematch? With Cain Velasquez, when you got a full training camp to do so, no, <coughs> of course um, I want to get this opportunity uh, to fight for uh, for the belt and also uh, face uh, Cain Velasquez. So um, the fact also uh, to get just uh, three weeks to train and you know get hurt uh, during uh, this the, the the few weeks during this preparation, you know, make me I, I can say those things make me sad because uh, I, I used to train uh, with injuries. But now, you know, I just came back, you know, from bad injuries. And uh, so even if uh, I, I wasn't pretty for, for people or whatever, I don't care. But uh, even if it wasn't exciting tonight, but uh, I, yeah, I just want to fight, you know, I have, the, have the chance to, prep to, uh, to be prepared during uh, the time, six months or whatever, to face him. Because I guess I, I think uh, I don't want to be disrespectful, but uh, he get lucky. I got no legs last time, and uh, now I'm come back. I got uh, all my uh, skills ready uh, to do that. So even uh, if I didn't show too much tonight, but it's good. It's because uh, it's been, it been a long time now, so maybe five years uh, in UFC. So I get a chance also to uh, improve myself here um, with my skills. But uh, I think I didn't show everything. So yeah, I would like to uh, to face him again, uh, get the chance uh, to fight for the title. Marcus Corbett with MMA and it's uh, Donald Cerrone over here. Um, uh, the um, after after the fight now, I know you're outspoken and, and confident in your fighting. Were you at all concerned about Dennis Silva's stand up? Um, like I said, I, I, w I was very concerned. You know, I didn't want to overlook anyone, but I felt like my striking was better than his striking. So I just you know, uh, he was really flashy, did a lot of spinning and karate tight kips. So I didn't want to say I, I didn't respect his striking or overlook him by any means, but I just think that mine was better. 
and check. Um, obviously, the UFC is trying to uh, break down the resistance of France to get the UFC in there. How involved are you in that? Sorry, say it again. To be involved in the in in the UFC actually getting into France to be able to uh, to host events in France. Are you involved in that at all? Of course. So uh, we're working out. You know, even if the UFC uh, did a great job at there, so on my side. Uh, I, I try to uh, to change all, all the mentality and uh, and uh, meet some uh, politic people, just uh, to to let them know how the ma the martial art, because uh, everybody had a kind of crazy idea about the about this sport, but they doesn't know how the rules are. So it's pretty interesting. But uh, uh, with the good job I did, you know, and just uh, the fact to uh, cross all the country. To do seminar, explain uh, everything with the press. You know, I think uh, for the next uh, for the next month, everything gonna change, and especially uh, when we get the president of the show. And for Roy, a smaller country, uh, you uh, said you you uh, modeling the uh, Steven Seagal ponytail. Are you also working on the Steven Seagal upkick in your training camp. <coughs> the upkick, or um, you know what, it's, I've been doing kung fu and been in martial arts all my life and, you know, just trying to change it up just a little bit, uh, just being a complete mixed martial arts, so you saw a lot of striking, a lot of groundwork today, so I'm just trying to add more to the repertoire, so whoever, whoever I fight next uh, gets to see two different, uh, you know, looks. Do you need to say something, David, or no? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hi. Oh, no, I didn't know if you needed to say something or if I could go ahead and ask a good question. Oh, yeah, yeah, ask, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Okay, I <laughs> hope so. I hope so. Um, this is for uh, Schick. I want to know, in your fight with Pat Barry, you were almost knocked out and were able to come back tonight. How close were you to being out? Because it definitely looked like Matt was able to hurt you a little bit with some of his punches. Yeah, he tried to hurt me, but uh, honestly, I was confident in... Uh, He's a good puncher, but uh, he didn't he didn't hurt me, so I was completely okay during the the bout, and uh, I wanted to see uh, if he can do more. That's why I was a little bit shy, you know, for the first exchange during the first the the two first round. Okay, and for Roy, how much did the two losses prior to this one weigh on your mind? You know, backstage <coughs> in the locker room, coming out is that is that something that was, you know, in in the front of your mind, or were you able to shake it off and just go out and fight? You know. The one thing when you, you know, as a fighter, you, if you start dwelling on the past, uh, that's what usually, like, fans or the press uh, always dwell on. Um, it's kind of like press, they, you know, if they write two bad articles, they should worry about getting fired, too. <laughs> but, uh, that's funny. but for the most part, you know, as a fighter, all you do is go out there and fight. If you give 110%, you know, you can always leave with your head hell hide. And, and the thing is, I always leave everything out there, and that's what I always do. So, uh, you know, that, that type of pressure is never on me. And how much better did you feel at the new weight? You know, I talked to Dan Hardy about it before, and he said that, you know, you lost about 25 or 30 pounds or so. And, and how, did, how did you feel physically? He dropped another 25 after he shaved tonight. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, you know what? Um, I, if I, f I feel good. Uh, I feel, this, you know, the same Roy Nelson, just, uh, just trying to be more active, uh, try to be a more complete mixed martial arts by adding, you know, takedowns with the, you know, kicks and – Still 100% in the UFC with kicks, so. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just one of those things, just trying to be a complete mixed martial artist and just keep on adding to the repertoire and adding more tools to the, um, to the belt. I'd uh, take a phone call. No, Nick has drank 10 bottles of water and still hasn't peed. So uh, they're going to bring him out here now and have a commissioner sit with him. Uh, I'm sure once he gets out here and sits up here, he's going to have to pee as soon as he gets here. But I, they're com he's coming right now. <clears throat> they're, get, they're bringing him now. Donald, um, there was talk before over here. Hi. There was talk before about you moving down to 145 after this fight. You were talking about it. Is that not interested? Are you not interested in that anymore? No, I'm definitely interested. Like I said, I just wanted to keep fighting. So whatever I got to do to just stay active and keep fighting, that's what I want to do. So uh, you would go... Between yeah, hell yeah, I'll fight anybody, anywhere, anytime. I don't care. I do not care, and that's my God-given truth. So uh, if I gotta go down, I gotta go up. I just want to stay fighting, stay active. That's what I want to do. And for Hatu, um, you were 
you're ranked the third featherweight in a lot of uh, rankings, and uh, you were the favorite. And I was wondering, with this fight with George, would you say that maybe you had a bit of difficulty because it's your first time in the UFC, and they always say, not foreigners, but when Japanese and Brazilians start their careers in the UFC, they have a difficult time? Or would you say that George Roop is an underestimated fighter? Uh, he just uh, he, he just strong fighter. That's it. That's it. Uh, uh, than I expected. Uh, she's she's strong. Do you feel you were overwhelmed overwhelmed at all for your first fight in the UFC? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had to. I had to control uh, his our distance, and uh, yeah, I yeah I tried to more aggressive fight, and uh, yeah, that I had to do. Yeah. And Roy, we don't know what you did to lose the weight, but tonight, are you gonna eat really good? And what do you plan to eat? Um, I don't know. I had some uh, little pretzel bites over here, so I'm pretty full right now. よく選手に質問です。え、試合後、え、日本格闘技会は、え、新年祝いと答えていましたが、え、今Um, the question for Hatsuhiyoki, and uh, he once got victorious at uh, his debut match in UFC, and uh, he said on the ring that uh, mixed martial art in Japan is not dead yet. And uh, please tell us the difference between Japanese MMA and uh, UFC. And then please give us a little message to the Japanese fans and the people who, is suffering, who suffered in the natural disaster and tsunami in March. え、まず東日本大震災ルールuh, encouraged by my fight. And as for the difference between UFC and the Japanese mixed martial art, of course, uh, basically the rules was, were different. But I think, I believe there's going to be a possibility that many of the Japanese fighters will be victorious in this event. Nick, uh, can you assess your performance today? And how happy are you with, the, with your victory? <coughs> Over here. Sorry, what was the question? Asse can you assess your performance today, and how happy I, how happy are you with your victory? Um, I thought I put on a poor performance, and um, you know, I didn't I didn't sm I didn't fight a smart fight, and uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm not happy with my performance at all, and um, I wasn't 100 percent today, um, and I felt good, but. Um, you know, just leading up uh, to this fight, I went through, <coughs> I went through a lot of, uh, you know, it's just uh, hard times, you know, 
and uh, I swear they had to push through this one. And you know, um, I got good people that I, that I train with that are behind me, and um, that's the reason why uh, you know I stuck through. And um, you know, I don't I don't give up, and um, that's that's why I'm still here. Uh, <coughs> question for Dana, Dana Michael Chavello from HDNet. Uh, I know you're a big boxing fan and you wrote in your editorial in the uh, program that uh, you were hoping that this fight tonight, BJ and uh, Nick, would be a throwback to the heady days of welterweight boxing, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Hitman Hearns, etc. Do you feel it lived up to that, that this is a throwback in MMA terms, seeing it was mostly a boxing contest anyway, uh, to those glory days of boxing in the 80s? No, I love this fight. I thought this fight was great. And, uh, you know, N Nick might be upset with his performance and, and thinks he didn't sm fight a smart fight. You know, only they would know what the game plan was, but what they did fight tonight like was two warriors, man. Those two guys went in there toe-to-toe, -to -toe, in the pocket, no, no, no backing up, no running around, both of them, BJ and, and uh, Nick. It was uh, for you know you know me. I was on Twitter, and people were going crazy on Twitter. And you know, uh, like I said, you have to respect both these guys. And it was exactly the fight that I thought it would be. It was awesome. And Nick, a question for you. Uh, in the first round, I thought BJ had the first round. You really turned it on in the second. You seemed to find your range with that jab. You pour beautifully with it and sets up the right hand nicely. That you know busted up BJ's eye and uh, sent him to the hospital here tonight. Uh, do you think there was a real turning point where you started to take control in the fight? And was it somewhere maybe in that second round that you really started to find your range? <clears throat> no, I think that <clears throat> I just kind of went for it a little more in the second round. But, uh, you know, my, my, my timing is uh, was really off. I didn't get the right type of sparring that I was needing. And, um, you know, I, I didn't get enough, t I didn't spend enough time working with my trainer um, the way that I should have. And, um, you know, I was back and forth a lot about a, a lot of things, this whole, um, this whole, uh, you know, time I had to train for this fight. So I'd make it to the gym and, um, you know, I, w I was there, I put in the hours and I did everything I was supposed to do. And it was just this, the mandatory uh, uh, workouts and things that, that, uh, that I, you know, I, that, I, that I have to do to make it through the, you know, it's just a mandatory amount of things that I do um, that uh, that's what got me through it but uh, <clears throat> I wasn't working out a hundred percent and I wasn't feeling a hundred percent I was just doing everything I wasn't leaving anything out I just did everything that I normally do and I'm supposed to do but I didn't do it with um, I don't know how you say it, like uh, I didn't I didn't go in there and feel good about it and and uh, you know I didn't I didn't really get into my to my gains like my strength gains. I just uh, you know just kept pushing through every day. So usually I I, I build, you know, and um, this time I, I just pretty much um, you know pushed through every little bit of mandatory training that I that I had. But I missed out on a lot of good. Uh, not that I missed out. I just uh, I had a hard time. You know I was real upset. I got fighting with uh, you know. Um, Fighting, you know, just fighting with everybody about getting getting the right sparring. But it, this is the thing, you know. I, I just uh, these people that I ain't get, you know, they're not taking care of me because they're not compensated. You know what I mean? My team needs to be compensated, and the people around me, um, you know, they're not getting nothing out of it. No, they're not getting no no airtime. They're not getting <clears throat> they're not getting paid like they should. My sparring partners, they're not getting paid like they should. And it, that's right. No, but that's why nobody wants any part of this. They don't want to help me train. Um, they're not getting nothing out of it, and I don't blame them. And and uh, nobody, nobody. Uh, it's hard to find sparring nowadays these days. You know, they, nobody's ready, or or you know, they they gotta be in the the best condition or whatever before they want to come in and work out with me now because everybody's intimidated or the trainer that tells them no, no, you you know you can't. That ain't good for you going there and spar with that guy. So you know these people ain't gonna do this stuff. I ain't gonna be able to get the training I need unless uh, these people start. You know, we, you know, unless these people are, are are compensated for what their their efforts and what they're doing to uh, you know help me. And Nick, just one final question, if you don't mind. Uh, you were saying all week how BJ Penn was your idol, and you actually bought your first ever MMA fight was a video of BJ Penn's when you were busting him up, as Dana said in the third round, and busting him up like no one has ever busted him up before. Did you, uh, at any moment, feel any pity, any remorse for beating up on on your idol like that, like no one else has you, beat up? You on know him? what? I, I didn't mean it like that. B.J. Penn was my idol. I never said that. People were putting words in my mouth. 
BJ Penn was, is is somebody I like his style. I, you know, it's my favorite type of <clears throat> a fighter because he was bringing the same type of style. Because I said, you know, he was coming from uh, Half Grace Jiu Jitsu, and uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, maybe he should represent that where he came from, and and that's all I had, you know, had against him, um, you know, that that that's the you know. That's where I felt like I was in the right, and maybe he was in the wrong. I had to find something to, you know, to fight him about, and I think that, you know, um, I don't know. Maybe that's what I was going with, but yeah, I, you know, I, there's a lot of people I look up to in the sport. I mean, maybe that you could call my idol before BJ Penn. I, you know, he's a he's one of my favorite people in this sport. I guess you could say, um, but I, you know, he, he it was just. Uh, I trained with him before, and I, you know, I, I know him and his brothers and J, JD and and all those guys. And I don't like <coughs> I don't like walking past them and having them give them dirty looks. I don't like walking past them and having nobody want to say hi to me and shake hands. What like we don't, you know, like we don't know each other, or you know, that's just not the way it should be. You know, I don't want to fight people I already know. Um, I don't think that's what fighting's all about. And um, so I didn't I didn't want this fight, and uh, so it wasn't motivating. For me, on top of the fact that it, it wasn't motivating for a lot of people because I wasn't motivated the way that I should have been. And, um, on, you know, on top of that, I had a lot of uh, arguments and fights with my whole camp about, about you know, getting the type of training and the sparring that I needed to in the first place. And I was doing a lot of training on my own. And, and uh, that's why, you know, we had so much miscommunications and I had a lot of issues with uh, making the right type of press happen and, and showing up to that last press conference that I should have been at. <coughs> but uh, you know that's what I'm saying. If everybody else is compensated, I can't blame them. You know it's not their fault. You know they work hard, and it's time that they're compensated for what they uh, what they what they do. And we wouldn't have an issue or any sort of miscommunication if uh, you know if they were if they were you know coming up. Thanks, like Nick. Thanks, D thanks, Dana. Dana, in Houston, you uh, you talked about having a conversation with Frankie Edgar about the importance of fighting at your more natural weight class. And you, you talked about how it was um, an issue of career longevity. Do you see that as an issue with BJ Penn? And if this is not his last fight, is that the type of conversation you'd like to have with him? I think BJ Penn's been remarkable. He's been a freak of nature, a guy who could move around to different weight classes. Um, yeah, but, but I think that when you have a guy like Frankie Edgar who absolutely positively weighs 145 pounds, and he's in there having wars with 55 pounders, I mean, that, that's really more. B.J. Penn, the thing with B.J. is B.J.'s in his 30s now. You know, B.J.'s not uh, as young as he used to be either. And B.J.'s biggest problem has always been conditioning, not fighting. He can handle, he can handle himself with anybody. Uh, Dana, you mentioned that uh, you had an announcement to make once Nick got up here. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys ask Nick all the questions you want to ask him, and then I'll, I'll do it. You guys done asking Nick questions? I, just, I got one for Nick, I guess. Okay. Uh, Nick, you, you, um, right after the boat, uh, you called out George St. Pierre. Uh, you were pretty fired up in calling out George and mentioned that, you know, potentially, you know, he may have been scared or he was faking the injury. Can you expand on that? I was supposed to fight George St. Pierre, not BJ Penn. And um, <coughs> that's why my face looks banged up right now because it's discouraging to have your fight uh, canceled and then, you know, back and forth about just everything. Uh, you know, I do what I'm told, but it, you know, it's um, you know, it's, it was hard to, m to find the motivation that that I needed to to, to come 100 percent and uh, to want to do this. Uh, you know, it's hard. It's, it, that's just I don't I don't mean to sit here and make excuses all day, but that was the fight that I was looking for. And um, like you know, I said it before. I thought maybe uh, I don't I, I didn't mean to you know give myself all kinds of credit or act like I'm something or, you know, because um <coughs> apparently I'm not, I'm not too important, but I think that um, if I were in his position, I would have wanted to, to uh, you know, fight, fight the Strike Force champion. You know, they made a big, whole big deal out of that, unifying the titles. And, um, you know, and it, it was after a while I realized, man, I'm, you know, I'm fooling myself thinking I'm somebody here. So, um, you know, because apparently he didn't think that it was important a fight against me, rather fight, um, you know, 
he'd rather have a different, you know, he'd rather fight Carlos Conduit or, you know, I would have said, hey, I want to I want to fight. I always want to go for the, the best fight. That's why I'm always calling out George St. Pierre. I don't have anything against George St. Pierre. I think he's a great fighter. I think he's a nice guy, just like everybody else, you know, and uh, he's a great role model. I would love to I would love to be that, too, if I was in that position. I just unfortunately have, haven't ever had the opportunity and the right people behind me to uh, push me to be that type of, uh, you know, that type of fighter or that type of role model or what you, uh, you know, what you would like to see. Dana, is, uh, is the Condit GSP fight still on and has Diaz earned the right to fight GSP? <coughs> well, let me put it this way. <laughs> I've known George St. Pierre since 2004 and uh, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met and he's always, you know, exactly the same no matter what the situation is no matter who he's fighting since 2004 i've never seen him like he was tonight george st pierre flipped out tonight after nick diaz was in the ring and um nick needs motivation he's got it he's gonna fight george st pierre <clears throat> yeah. carlos condit has agreed to step aside and get the next, uh, the next guy. He said that Nick, I quote, you're gonna think I'm full of shit, but this is the truth. I, I quote, he's the most disrespectful human being I've ever met, and I'm gonna put the worst beating you've ever seen on him in the UFC, is what George St. Pierre said. And we called Carlos Condit, he's agreed, he stepped aside, and he wants to fight on that same card. So we're hoping to do this thing uh, Super Bowl weekend in Las Vegas. There you go. <clears throat> See, I got to come off just to get a fight. <clears throat> I got to come off like that just to get a fight in this. You know what I'm saying? I got to be the bad guy. You're going to point the finger, make me the bad guy. I'm the bad guy, and now I get a fight. <clears throat> it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I, I want to ask you about that then. I mean, it's Karen. Hey. Um, I, I, I personally don't think you have to be the bad guy, though, because you do have so many fans. So why do you, why do you feel that people are against you? Because I, I feel like a lot of people... The reason why I'm getting this fight is because everybody wants to see me take an ass whooping right about now. So, all right, I'm ready. I'll take my ass whooping. I already worked for it. I'll take my ass whooping. I'll take my money, and I'll go home. See, because I, I see that people think it's going to be a great fight. I mean, tonight you did to BJ kind of what... GSB did to cause check in terms of jabbing and stuff. But to me, sitting he there watching. He did to BJ what nobody's ever done to BJ in yeah. 10 years in this sport. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like maybe you're misunderstanding that, that you actually do have a, a, a great fan base that w actually wants to see you excel, not, not see you fail. Okay. I agree. Yeah, la la last question to you then. I know you're dissatisfied with your camp and you're, and you're unhappy about things. Does that mean... Some things might change, or you might, for the GSP camp, maybe train differently, get new people. What do you think you'll do? No, I, I'm not unhappy with my camp. I love my camp. I love my training partners. You know, they are. Uh, they gotta. They gotta do them too. <coughs> you know what I mean? It's about time they. Uh, you know. You know everybody. Everybody needs to do them. You know, it's. Uh, we we all we all equally working the same. We're all trying to trying to. Uh, you know, to excel to the next level and. Um, it's not their fault. I'm just, uh, I just think that, uh, you know, they could get more credit for, for helping me out and they can be, comp oh, you know, they could be more compensated for, for all the work that they do to help me out. And if they were, then people would recognize that and I would have a better, um, and a, you know, a stronger team behind me. And, um, but I, like, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't have the strongest team. Um, you know, uh, considering my circumstances through this whole, you know, fight life that I've been living, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without, you know, Jake Shields, Gilbert Melendez, and uh, Caesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I w this, this ain't just me. This is, this is them too. This is my little brother. This is Caesar Gracie. This is Jake Shields. <coughs> Another thing is too. I don't, you know, that was a bad call on the last fight, Jake Shields. You know, I said. <sighs> What happens, you know, you take a knee, what are you gonna stand there and take knees? No, you're gonna go you're gonna go for the uh you're gonna go for the takedown, you're gonna go down, you're gonna eat no more knees. 
Next thing you know, this, this, this kid's doing these little panicky rabid punches, scares the referee, referee jumps, tackles my partner. Okay, what's he going to do, flip out because the ref's tackling him? The ref gets off him. So, you know, he's telling him, hey, I wasn't out. I wasn't out. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> Jake gets, gets hit with stuff like that all day. I've never seen him, you know, never seen or heard of him. You see Dan Henderson knock him down. Where does he go? He's not going to stand there and take more punches. He goes straight down because, see, let's see you jump on him and try to finish him and uh, control him on the ground. It ain't going to happen. You don't want to do that, you know. So this, this kid jumps on him, hits him with little rabid punches. Then the referee stops it. It's a bad call. Question to Dana. Uh, Dana? Yep, go ahead. Hey. Hey. So, uh, what? I what can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about a uh, uh, Japanese fighter's performance the last two months? And the Yushin Okami lost, Go Takanori Gomi lost, and Mizugaki win. He got a win, but a uh, uh, very you know complicated um, judgment. And then, how important to put the Japanese fighter in the UFC right now? What's the final question? How important is it for Japanese, Japanese fighters? Fighter, yeah, for UFC. How important is it for us to have Japanese fighters? Yeah. I don't look at people whether they're Japanese or they're Brazilian or whatever it is. We're looking for the best fighters in the world. And this is where, you know, it's the place, the sport is very international. We're going global and we want all the best fighters, no matter who they are or where they're from, um, whether they're Japanese or not. And, and, and I still think that Yushin Okami is one of the best fighters in the world. Uh, their performance yeah. well like i said whether you're japanese brazilian croatian or whatever it is it's a tough place to fight all the best fighters in the world fight here from all over the world you know i, I wouldn't point out at one certain you know spot on the map and say ah oh, these guys aren't doing well those guys aren't doing well you know these divisions are tough and all the toughest fighters in the world are here and it's it's, it's tough to stay here Dana. I don't think I answered your question, but I tried. <laughs> Dana, could you uh, talk about the conversation with Carlos, how that went? And you said he was willing to step aside. Did, was he really given a choice or more of a directive? Of course. I, I didn't call him up and say, hey, you know, I, I like Carlos Conda. I respect him, you know. Uh, and, yeah, he's, you know, he's getting the title shot. He'll get the next, the next shot at the guy. And he said he wants to fight on that card, too. So he's going to fight on that card. It was a good conversation. What if he were to lose in that, in that fight? That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. And if I could follow up with Nick real quick. Nick, uh, obviously you talked about the difficulties of, of finding proper training partners and they need to be compensated. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but isn't that something that's usually taken care of by the fighter or in his camp? I mean, wh who should be compensating those guys and, and what's the fix to that problem? Um, I don't know. Maybe there's not enough money in the sport, man. You got Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather making $25 million, um, you know. He can't stop the double leg. You know? <laughs> I had to go to school to learn how to do that shit. I had to go, you know, I had to work hard and I had to, I had to st you know, study every aspect. And um, that's what we're doing out here. And I think that if I was making a tiny piece of that, that everybody I know would be compensated. Everybody I know, including my own family. Please. <laughs> I can expand on that a little bit. I think part of their frustration really isn't worth, you know. It's more to do with boxing. And, and as you, most of you people know, we were supposed to work out with the Andre Ward camp. And uh, the guys there, the professional boxers, aren't going to box with us. And, and that's part of the, the problem here, you know. They all want X amount of compensation, and, and, and Nick didn't get the boxing in for this one. Andre Ward got cut. He was out of the fight. So there was no training with Andre Ward, and there was no training in that whole camp over there with Nick Diaz. And I think that was the some one of the things he's very yeah. Well, if you, if this is where we're going to do this, uh, you know, when you talk about boxing and what boxing makes, there's a handful of guys that make Floyd Mayweather money. There's actually a couple guys that make Floyd Mayweather. There's two. You got Pacquiao and you got Floyd, and then the rest of the guys. There's thousands of guys that make nothing, you know. And when you talk about being compensated for sparring, that is what you guys do. You guys set your camp and, uh, and you, you build your camp and you bring guys in for sparring. Everybody does. That's what boxing does too. And yes, you might compensate your guys and if you're fighting under the, the promoter and he pays for it, he takes that out of your check. 
if you don't show up for six flights, you miss six flights to show up for a press conference, the promoter charges you for those six flights. We don't. We pay for them. We take them on the chin every time you miss a flight, and, and the list goes on and on. Believe me, I've heard the, the arguments from the guys in this sport about boxing. If you're pissed off at what's going on here, go try boxing and see how that works out for you. What's Andre Ward making a fight? I don't know what he's making, but yeah. and I think we're going to the wrong direction. No, I hear you. But our frustration is not to do with our tight circle, is what Nick is trying to say, but I think most people here don't know the, the whole story. Our frustration is with training partners coming over from boxing. And yeah, and and we're and trying to mesh the two and together. And the reality is when you get to a level that Nick Diaz is, I 100% I get it. Who the hell wants to go over and spar with him? You get their head punched in for five rounds. Probably not many I guess people. an MMA fighter. And, and, and that's yeah. part of the thing that's happening over where we're at. I hear you. No, I, I hear you. When you get to that level, it's tough. So, Nick, uh, can you just, in the fight itself, uh, the first round, you know, when BJ landed on you, w did you make an adjustment? Was there anything that you felt like you weren't doing? Technically, it seemed in the second round you got him against the cage and you really had a lot of success there. No, I think, you know, I, I had plenty of ways I could have controlled him in this fight and, um, you know, just found my way into a strategy that would have worked for me the whole fight. Um, you know, I could have finished that fight. And, um, you know, I just uh, I was fighting stupid. I was doing stupid stuff out there. I was taking punches on purpose. And uh, I, there's just there's, there's no reason for that. And uh, I don't Uh, I can do a lot. I can I can look a lot better than that. I can do a lot better than that, and uh, uh, that's what you know. I would have liked to do. Do you feel like it had you, as Caesar referenced, had the chance to work with Andre Ward, that some of the punches you did get hit with that you would have been able to block? Oh yeah, I wouldn't. This I didn't have any sort of uh, workouts like uh, how I have in the past. I wouldn't. Have, I would have come out ten times better than I look tonight. That's for sure. I don't take punches like that when you're working out with uh, with guys like Andre Ward and uh, the guys even that are working out with Andre Ward. You know, um, if I could have got any of the sparring that I could have had in the past, I would have been a lot more confident and uh, just have known that I worked out with some of these guys that are, you know, that are at that that top level. <coughs> was it a bittersweet feeling at all? It was a great win for you, maybe your biggest win. I, uh, one of your biggest wins anyways, but then you know it could have been the championship and you could have the belt around your waist tonight. Does that make it bittersweet? Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't really know how, how you mean by that. But Just, you know, is it disappointing where you feel like, you know, if circumstances had worked the right way, you might be the UFC and Strike Force champion? He's trying to say if Dana didn't fuck you, you know, and pull you this fight out from you, would it have been a better night if, if Dana didn't shove it up your ass? Yeah, yeah, maybe win or lose. I think I said that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe win or lose. You know, I've been going, I've been, I haven't taken no fights off. You know, I haven't taken no time. I've been fighting every three months since I was, uh, since I was 17 years old. You know, anybody else that did that? They only, st they stopped me one time, uh, six month break, and that was it. Other than that, I've been fighting every time. Never backed out of a fight in my life. You show me somebody else has done that, hasn't pulled some bullshit about an injury. I've been injured my last, all these last fights, even this one. I didn't pull out, you know. I had no reason to want to fight. I could have just fall out. I'm depressed about this whole not fighting, not getting paid what I wanted to get paid, um, you know. And I had all the, you know, I, I could have pulled out on any of this injury. My knee hurts. Oh, you know, my hamstring. My hamstrings. I got the same issues, man. And uh, and I, uh, you know. I go running all all the time around my neighborhood, you know, out of out of the, out of the bad neighborhood and into a good neighborhood where I like to run, you know. I run by hundreds of these nice huge houses with these big yards and fountains everywhere, and they have these people have like their you know little picnic patio, little side yard, little pool, little all this stuff, right? And then I then I take a little circle around and then go back into my neighborhood where my car gets robbed. And I got some, you know, dude out front of my house looking for cigarette butts or something from, you know, where my f some friends might have left some or, you know, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm, you know, I'm over here. All you people, everybody's watching me fight, and, you know. Let me tell you, I don't know how much houses cost up there in, uh, <laughs> yeah, in Stockton. Yeah.
But, bro, let me tell you what. You got enough money to move. <laughs> I guarantee you that. I don't know uh, what. While I'm fighting every two months, every three months, I'm going to have to take a few fights off and try to situate my, you know what I'm saying? I, my brother moved, and, I'm, you know, it's like, it's a long story, man. But you can see what I'm working with. You guys, you would laugh. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I didn't I don't know how to go buy in a house in the middle of all this training. I, I didn't go to school for that, you know. I, I started training jiu-jitsu when I was 16 years old, you know, because I got, I got thrown around a few schools. I started training jiu-jitsu when I was 16. I went on, you know, 100% because I already knew I beat all these guys. I beat everybody, you know, I, and that should do it. So um, if I had, if I had a ha you know, if I had a half a second to kind of situate something, um, then, you know, that'd be that. Everyone wants to make their little jokes and laugh, and Dana says, too, Dana, all you guys laugh at me. That's not funny, all right? If I just backed out of the fight like George did, I could have got my life together, and yeah, I could have thrown some money on some something, right? And, and, and then I wouldn't have nothing to complain about. But unfortunately, that's not the situation I've been in, and nobody knows what it, what, uh, what it is, you know? But it is what it is, and it's, it's, not, it's not a good time. It's not, you know... And, and right, nobody knows. Nobody wants to come see it. Every time I'm avoiding the press, nobody wants to come see that. That's not appealing to anybody. So, um, <coughs> you know, I can sit up here and just complain all day. I don't want to do that, but that's what you guys, you guys, what you got me doing. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, did the BJ hurt you at all in there today? Yeah, BJ is good. You know, he fucking throws an arm punch. It hurts. He is hard. He's good. He's you know, he's the best there is. Should be fighting 155. I think if you worked out with me, you'd have gotten in shape. You probably won some of those fights. Um, you know, but you know he like you know he's ready. He's been fighting. He's ready to you know he's I mean he's been, he's been fighting. You know hey, that's when he's he's tired of this shit, man. He's he you know he's ready to be here, be paid, and uh, you know I've been fighting too. I've had more fights than he has. I'm gonna have four more fights than George has. I'm gonna have more fights than everybody. Harder fights <clears throat> would not half as much help. Dana, um, BJ did say that this uh, was potentially his last fight. One, do you think uh, that was his official retirement? And if so, um, he uh, he was there to show you guys jujitsu in the original over ten years ago. What does it feel like for you to see one of these Hall of Famers step down? No, BJ's a warrior, man. And you know, when he, I'm sure he's in there tonight. Like I said, what happened to him tonight has never happened to him in his entire career. So, you know, what he's thinking tonight, he might not think. You know. Eight weeks from now, who knows? So it might be or it might not be. That's up to him. I don't know. Take one more question. Go ahead. Nick, Mike. is there any joy in this win for you? Uh, I mean, just no. getting the title, even the nope. fact that. No. Nope. I had to fight somebody I know, had to fight somebody who uh, might have been, we might have been friends at some point in time before, you know? Yeah. We, we could have been, had training together. They already had brought me on for training. Uh, I got to go with the sketchy feeling of all these people having some secret plan. They think they know something. They have this video on me, all this whole camp. Oh, you know, it's not for, you know, to go hard and then record it and put it on the Internet. It's just for us. And I'm like, right. Now you guys have all this footage of me in case you ever want to, you know, I don't know what to think about, you know. That's why I don't make friends. I don't, I'm don't. i over here shaking hands and doing all this, you know, show up with, with three other fighters from the UFC and hang out. No, nah, if we're going to be fighting, we ain't friends. I ain't even going to start that. You know, next thing you know, Dana's going to make us fight. That's not, uh, that's not how, that's not what I want. That's not good for the fan. That's not, I don't, I don't want to see that either. You make two people fight each other and their friends and they go out there and, and give each other a hug and then go into the third round. What the hell is that? <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. I mean, well, not where I'm from. They don't want to see that. You know, they don't want to see them wrestling match. You know, nothing against the wrestling. <laughs> what about the fact that you, you know, you're finally getting the title shot now, and I, I assume a bigger payday is going to come along with that, which is something that you want to. Does that make you feel better about how things turned out? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not feeling better about anything right now. I feel. I feel like this is, you know, I'm. I'm w <laughs> I, it's. It's. I should be. Should. Good night, everybody.